Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is Sea Raptor, and it is time to continue our Learn to Play series for the Japanese torpedo centric destroyer branch. Let's take a look at Tier 9's Yugamo. Yugamo was added to the game, I guess, about uh, six ish years ago now, back when they split up the Japanese destroyer line. We mentioned it last video, the original Tier 9 in this, in this Japanese destroyer line was Kagero, which was dropped to Tier 8. Um, it, when they reorganized everything in, I think, early part of 2016? No, late 2016, early 2017, something like that. And Yukimo entered the game as the Tier 9 ship. Now, since then, she's had quite a legacy in the game. This is an excellent Tier 9 destroyer. And I said this you know, when I made the video for Fletcher over in the Learn to Play for the American Destroyers. There are very few bad Tier 9 destroyers in World of Warships. And Yukimo absolutely fits that bill the i won't say the drawback the quirk the irritating quirk let's say of this ship is that it's almost like kagero part two the similarities are eerie to the point where well we'll talk about all of it but the bottom line is if you got comfortable playing kagero yugamo is more of same here's the catch yugamo once upon a time only ever saw slightly better matchmaking. What do I mean by that? Well, super ships didn't exist. So when you played a tier nine ship, you were guaranteed you wouldn't be, probably wouldn't be bottom tier. At a minimum, there'd only be one tier difference between you and the opponent's, the opponent's ships. At a minimum, or I should say at a maximum, maximum of one tier difference, right? That's no longer the case. The tier 11 ships, the super ships, have negatively impacted, seriously negatively impacted the viability and the playability of a lot of Tier 9 ships. And Yugamo, I won't say that Yugamo falls into that category, but I will say, as the game has evolved because of the super ships, she is more challenging to play in random battles than she once was. Still an excellent ship, um, still got a lot going for her, but there are some things that uh, the matchmaking now doesn't work for you quite as often as it once did. So let's take a tour around the ship. We'll highlight what's different from Kagero, what's better, what's worse, and then we'll uh, do what we always do. We'll talk through how to build the thing out, some ideas, some thoughts, some recommendations, and then show you guys a little bit of sample gameplay. So as we do, we'll start with survivability. Now, for this particular captain, you see there I have 18, a little over 18 and a half thousand HP. This particular captain does have survivability expert. I didn't do this down at Kagero, and that's debatable. We talked about that choice at the time. Here at Kagero, I almost, I mean, sorry, here at Yugamo, apologies, I almost feel like it's mandatory. The reason for that is Yugamo's base health pool, unbuffed, is 15,500 HP. Astute observers will note that is only 400 HP higher than the Tier 8 Destroyer, than Kagero. So for moving up an entire tier, you're rewarded with like one more HE shell hit worth of health. That's terrible. That's terrible. Yugamo is the... Well, she's actually not. Look at that. Now that I look at the list again. But, okay, she's certainly the lowest HP Tech Tree Destroyer in Tier 9. Unquestionably, without fail, nothing... Nothing uh, is even all that close to her, I think. The next one, well, actually, Uster Jutland ties her. My apologies. So the European Destroyer Branch, also not known for their longevity. The difference is that Uster Jutland gets a heal. Yugamo never does. So the effective health pool of the Tier 9 European Destroyer is definitely a little higher. Yugamo is going to struggle. Now, there is one premium in the game. That's Benham, uh, a Tier 9 American Premium Destroyer, USS Benham, who has less health than this at Tier 9. But given that ship's insane, ridiculous, nutty torpedo damage, uh, torpedo DPM, I'm, I'm okay with that. I think that's a fair balance for the way, the way Benham plays. But Yugamo, despite moving up a tier, you do not pick up a significant amount of additional HP, which feels bad. It, it, this still, to me, feels like a miss on Wargaming's part, if I'm honest. I feel like maybe she could have done with, I don't know, 1500 HP? Give me, give me three or four shell hits, right? Something? But, um, but no, sadly not. This is not a strength of the ship. Maneuverability and concealment, blessedly. Certainly concealment, absolutely are. The same song we sung down at Kagero, we're going to be singing that same tune here at Tier 9 at Yugamo. We'll start by talking about detection. You see there on the surface, 5.5. Yugamo is just a slight hair bit less stealthy than Kagero. 
It turns out Kagero and her tier 8 premium cousin, Asashio, down at tier 8, um, are the stealthiest things at, like, high tier play just about in World of Warships. Jaeger might edge them out a little bit, but they're pretty, they're pretty close, okay? And Yugamo is just a sliver, like 150 meters less stealthy than those ships. So this is, this is um, basically best in tier detection. Um, she does beat out Nustrashimi by about 40 meters, so it's very, very close. But she does have best in tier detection, uh, which is good, because with this health pool, she's going to need all the help she can get. But again, if you play Kagero, if you play through the line, you should be used to having to play this particular game, right? Now, one thing that, unfortunately, this ship doesn't improve upon significantly, but a little bit, is speed. You recall Kagero, not a very fast destroyer. Yugumo, similar problem. You do pick up an extra half knot of base speed. So you are 35.5 knots. You see there the 37.3 with the speed flag. That's as good as it gets, right? Unless you take Swift in Silence um, or uh, or have your engine boost ticking, that's that's as good as it gets. Uh, 640 on the turning circle is the same as Kagero, but, but with, with the similar speed and the similar turning circle and the rudder shift, I think is only like a couple a couple of tenths of a second off. If you got used to driving Kagero, Yugamo is going to handle almost exactly the same. She's just about the same responsiveness on the rudder. Hull shape is about the same. Overall ship layout is about the same. Given their health pools, I have to believe the gross tonnage of each ship is probably about the same. So if you spend a lot of time, if you took the time, let's say, to get to know how to play Kagero, Yugamo is going to feel very comfortable in terms of driving the ship. And you only have a slight little little, little bit of less stealth to manage along the way. So you're used to playing that game. Main battery. Hey, look, guys, it's the same dual-barreled Japanese 127 millimeter 50 caliber guns we've been seeing the entire line. Just like Kagero, I've got a uh, single double-barreled turret up forward and a super-firing pair back aft. Um, what's different? Two major changes here with Yugamo's main battery. One is the reload speed. You see there, I'm down to 5.7 seconds from 7.1. That is a 20% increase, 20% faster reload time than Kagero had at Tier 8. Now, 5.7 seconds is nothing to get super excited about. But let me tell you something. If you're in a low-health destroyer and it's late in the game, this is not a ship you want to pick a gunfight with, okay? We went from Akatsuki, which was like 7.7 .7 seconds, 7.5. We went 7.1 at Kagero. Now we're down to 5.7. These reload times are still very, very, very bad. But, again, the same tune we've been singing now for a few tiers. Worst in tier gun DPM out of those HE shells. Best in tier Alpha Strike. So, if there's a Japanese destroyer in the game, and you're in a low health destroyer on the other team, you gotta be real frosty. Because chances are that guy outspots you, and he probably only needs two salvos to finish you off. From the other side of that equation, if you're driving a Yugamo right here, and there's a low health destroyer on the other team, chances are... You can, do, you can do a little destroyer hunting. Again, depends on a variety of other factors, but the bottom line is it has to be the sort of thing that you factor start factoring into your mental calculations when you drive this ship. Best in tier alpha, worst in tier sustained DPM. You don't want to be in a sustained gunfight, but popping up, taking a couple of quick shots, smoking up, ducking back behind an island, whatever, that is an, a very, very effective and very efficient way to use this main battery because it hurts. These guns hurt opposing destroyers. Now, the other big change is the range. If you remember, a fully buffed Kagero could get her main battery range out to like 9.6 or something like this, 9.4, whatever it was. And even then, we had a conversation talking through the modules about, is this really worth it? Should you really, you should almost be treating that like an Italian destroyer. You want the shorter gun range in most cases. Yugamo here can push her main battery out to 12 kilometers. Now that is, I'm going to go check the, uh, Yep, that's with the buff. So her base range, let's just take a quick peek. Should be around 10 and a half, I'm guessing. Straight up 11. So that is unfortunately, unfortunately, as short as you can get the main battery range on these guns. That's actually, if I'm honest, a bit of a detriment, okay? The reload is nice, but this means that anytime you pull the trigger, you have over a 10 kilometer gun bloom. That can be really uncomfortable depending on the situation and your, your board position at the time. So if you're going to choose to get into a gunfight, you're going to choose to use these guns, you've got, a, you've got lots of things to consider. Um, do not forget you have them, but be judicious and smart about how you use them, which is kind of the, the, the same, same song we've been singing throughout the entire Japanese destroyer line. But I think it gets 
it gets even more critical as you get to the high tiers of destroyer play. There are a lot more ships out there uh, as you get into tier 8, 9, 10, and certainly when you start seeing tier 11 opponents that can murder you in the time that your detection bloom will, will disappear. You'll just be, you will be flabbergasted how quickly you can take damage if you mess up even once with this gun bloom and your guns at the wrong time. So be, use Kagero to, to the, the shorter gun bloom on Kagero to train yourself to get into the mode of thinking about when to use them and when not to. And then as you move to Yugamo, just be aware that that gun bloom is working against you and you have to be even smarter. You take all those lessons that you learned down at Kagero and play even better and play even smarter when you use these main battery guns. But they're excellent, excellent guns. Torpedoes. Same song, right? This is the last ship in the line that will be stuck with double torpedo tube launchers. i got a pair of quad launchers here mounted amidships on either side of the, of the second stack, just like Kagero. Um, now, here's the good news. These torpedoes are a little better. The torpedoes on Kagero um, were the stock modules that I start with here. The Type 93 Mod 2s. So Yugamo, that's your stock torpedoes. 10 kilometer range, 21,000 point alpha, 67 knots of speed, etc., etc. Okay? You can eventually the, move up to the Type 93 Mod 3s, which is a very similar torpedo. Same speed, 67 knots of base speed. It gets a basically a, what's the next best thing to a 24,000 point alpha damage strike and a 12 kilometer range. So that is really, really, really awesome. Now, we can have this conversation now or we can have it when we start talking about modules. I think I'll talk about it at modules. But if you were paying attention, you notice there's a third torpedo upgrade in here. The F-3s. The infamous Japanese F-3 torpedoes. Once upon a time, these torpedoes were only available on Tier 10 Japanese cruiser Zhao. But over the years, Wargaming has retroactively added these to a couple of the tech tree ships in the game, Yugamo and Shimakaze. And then they are the only torpedo choice for some of the fancier high tier premium Japanese destroyers. I'm looking at you, Yukikaze. So um, we're going to talk a little more about the F3s when we get to modules, but just know that they're here and they have different characteristics. Most of the video I'm going to go through, assuming that you're playing this in the traditional style of the longer range, slightly longer reload torpedoes that the Japanese are fairly well known for. Okay. And that's these 12 kilometer ones here. The good news is the bad news is that the reload stays really bad, right? The base reload on these torpedoes is over 110 seconds, right at 114 seconds. The good news is you're now at tier nine, which means you can get upgrade module slot six, which means you can drop this reload to be down significantly lower than Kagero. If you remember, Kagero couldn't get her, her reload any faster than 100 seconds or so. Fully buffed Yugamo, you see there on the right, just a touch over 87 seconds. Basically call it 90 seconds, right, for a reload on each, uh, on each launcher. That's really good. That's really good. And then, if you want to play really balls to the wall, you can still take Torpedo Reload Booster on the ship, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, excellent, excellent torpedoes. So, yeah, this is why you're here. This is literally what you're paying. All these other disadvantages for uh, the speed, the, the lack of gun power, the lack of health pool is to take these torpedoes, and they are absolutely worth it, 100%. So, yeah, really good stuff. Uh, depth charges. Same tune we've been singing. Japanese depth charges more than capable of murdering submarines, given the opportunity. Here's the trick. Um, you got to be driving on top of them, right? And that sometimes is the irritating part of fronting a submarine. You're putting down 12 bombs in a stick. These bombs hit like trains. Very, very close to that best in tier 5, 5,000 or 50, 100 point damage you get out of the Americans or the Brits. And so, yeah, Japanese destroyers are absolute death to submarines that make, them, make positional errors or get overly aggressive or whatever. When you combine this uh, damage possibility with this stealth, it means that these ships can do really good work against, you know, average and mediocre just submarine captains who are caught out of position and don't know how to get away. So keep, keep that in mind. A defense. All right. So, of course, these numbers are bad, right? We've been talking about this the entire way up the line. It's not any better here at Kagero. I mean, sorry, at Yugamo. Now, we talked about it at Kagero. Kagero, um, down at Tier 8... Um, I think didn't have an outer bubble, right? Her max A range was like 2.5 kilometers or something like this. Here at Yugamo, you actually do have your main battery moving into 
the uh, the dual mounted the dual, the dual purpose guns. Okay, so your A range does go out to 5.8 kilometers. It was pointed out to me in the comments of the Kigero video that you know I talked about toggling your AA in Kigero when in Kigero it's it is kind of a pointless exercise, right? Because your AA range and your aerial detection are almost the same. They're about 100 meters apart. It's not a significant advantage. You need to learn that skill though, because at Yugamo it's a huge deal, right? Running around in a game with a carrier with a 5.8 uh, AA bubble and you have your AA guns turned on in a ship that doesn't want to be spotted by planes is just, you're asking for death. So as, I, as I've been preaching for just all destroyer videos, right? Turn your AA off, leave it off until you choose to turn it on. In other words, planes have already spotted you or it's obvious that the carrier is going to drop somebody else and you want to contribute to the AA of a teammate or something like that, um, or you're shooting down a fighter over your head, you know, that P, that P key to be able to toggle your anti-aircraft guns on and off is a critical survival tool when you play destroyer in a game with an aircraft carrier. Honestly, in a game with any kind of planes, maybe it's a hybrid battleship or a hybrid cruiser or a I don't know, a Halford or something. If there's any player-controlled planes, I'm not talking about depth charge planes. I'm not talking about um, Dutch Dutch bomber strikes. I'm talking about player-controlled aircraft. Anything like that that might spot you when you don't want to be spotted, the, you know, learning to control your AA is a very, very key skill. So you might not have needed it down at Kagero, but you do need it here at Yugamo. Learn it, love it, live it. With that said... You're not going to get a lot of use out of these AA guns, right? It's just not what the Japanese do well. You've got the double, you've got the dual purpose main battery now, but you're still stuck with only a handful of their little 25 millimeter guns all over the deck, and they just don't put out a significant amount of DPS. Just as before, enough to kill the occasional fighter that gets dumped over your head, but you're not going to meaningly dissuade any kind of carrier planes that want to come bomb you, strike you, fly over your head, whatever. All right, let's start talking about some really important stuff because. Here at Tier 9, we have, a, we have some really significant options for build choices. And it's not just necessarily in upgrades. It also comes down to some of these modules. Let's go through the upgrades, because I think this is the easier conversation. Name Armaments 1 in Slot 1 is my recommendation. There's an argument for a magazine mod. If you're, if you're worried about exploding um, or damage control party, I would never, never take this auxiliary mod. Um, but I think main armaments is the right way to go. This protects your main battery guns and your torpedo tubes against getting in capped. This is an excellent choice for this ship. Slot number two. Um, again, as we've been saying, engine room protection would be my recommendation. If you wanted the extra engine boost, this is also a perfectly valid choice. Spend a little coal, pick this up, get some more use out of the engine boost. Excellent choice. You won't be upset. In slot three, you've got basically three possibilities. One is the main battery modification to uh, boost your turret traverse. Uh, aiming systems mod, if you want a little bit of extra uh, accuracy out of your main battery, and your torpedo tubes will traverse a little faster. Um, or torpedo tubes modification one, which is my recommendation, because you still get the torpedo traverse, uh, torpedo tube traverse speed out of this, but you also get a 5% bonus to the speed of the torpedoes themselves, which for these torpedoes works out to about three or three and a half knots. The base speed of these torpedoes is 67 knots. By the time you take this modification and the equivalent speed boost captain skill, and we'll talk about that in a minute, these torpedoes move 74 knots with a 24,000 point alpha and a 12 kilometer range. They're really, really good torpedoes. <laughs> Your other options here, of course, A guns, one, don't take this, please don't take this, and then smoke generator. Uh, again, if you were playing a bunch in a div and you got some value out of this, hey, you do you. I would not take this in randoms. Don't recommend. I actually don't think there's a big case to be made for aiming systems mod. Your guns are very, very accurate. I don't think there's a lot of value in this. And so my, I would encourage you to take main battery two or torpedo torpedo tubes, whichever one whichever one suits your playstyle best. Slot four, again, propulsion is my recommendation just because the other options are kind of garbage. Steering gears isn't going to get you a lot. You already have a 3.6 rudder shift. What are you going to drop it down to? Uh, 2.9, three flat. Like you're never going to tell the difference there. You're never going to notice that. Um, depth charges. This would give you two more racks of of 12 bombs each. So you'd have a total of when you were fully loaded, you'd have four complete rack, four complete patterns of 12 bombs. It's a little overkill. Uh, usually two is plenty with how how hard these bombs hit. Um, and then damage control. Again, you're gonna anytime you you get really low on fire and stuff, you're probably gonna be pushing your damage control party button. I don't think there's a lot of value in this. So propulsion mod is kind of the the best of of a slot that really doesn't have a lot to offer 
uh, anything in this line. I think if you take anything other than concealment in slot five, you're crazy. Concealment is how this ship stays alive. It's how she does what she does. This should be, you should just reach for this and never look back. I'm, I'm not even really going to consider these other options just because a Kagero that doesn't have max stealth in my mind is a Kagero that's going to get dead the first time somebody spots her because she does not have the health pool to hang in a gunfight against anybody else really in her matchmaking bracket other than like the occasional other Japanese destroyer. Now in slot six, you have a couple of options that might uh, might appeal, and then two that I would hardly not recommend. Of course, you don't want to take Auxiliary Armaments mod. I mean, yeah, your continuous A damage goes up, but you don't care. Your A is terrible. Don't do this. Gunfire Control mod would give you more range out of your main battery. Again, don't. I do not recommend this. You should be looking the other way. If there was a way to shorten your main battery range, that's what you would want. Unfortunately, 11 kilometers is as low as you can get it, so don't pump it any higher than this. That leaves you with Torpedo 2's Modification 2, which is my recommendation, because, again, we talked about it earlier, the torpedoes are why you're here. It's why you're playing this branch. Let's get the maximum use out of them that we can. This is going to give you 15% reload time. That's going to be able to drop that reload under 90 seconds when you combine it with the right captain skill. You might be tempted by main battery mod 3, and there's a valid argument to be made here for this just because Yugamo's guns are significantly better in terms of reload than we saw at Kagero. This 12% buff would get your reload down to right at around 5 seconds, which sounds terrible until you consider that's the same reload on an Oodaloy or a Tashkent, right? So, I mean, that's not atrocious garbage. It's not, it's not like, these aren't like Fletcher guns or, or Kitakazi guns, but, hmm. Now, here's the thing. Again, what have I been saying? The guns are like a backup weapon for you to finish off low health targets or harass things that aren't looking at you. That's why I wouldn't do this, right? Your torpedoes are your main primary armament. The guns are here for self-defense and harassment only. A main, a main battery build, a main battery build Yugamo is a Yugamo that is not going to be in a game very long, I don't think. <laughs> Just because, I mean, that'd be a fun challenge to try for like, you know, giggles and laughs on, on Twitch or YouTube or something. But it's not how I would recommend playing the ship if you're serious about, about playing Japanese Torpedo Destroyer and grinding your web to Shimakaze. Um, again, as before with consumables, you have a choice. Torpedo, Le torpedo Reload Booster and Smoke Generator. I'll sing the exact same song I sung down at Kagero. If you are grinding this line for the first time, if you're new to these ships, please take Smoke Generator. It has more utility. It will save your bacon while you are working things out, and, and it will save you from the occasional mistake, the occasional positional error, the occasional little bit of overzealousness that you might have pushed a little too close to the opposing team and run into somebody that you didn't want to run into. Smoke Generator gives you a potential way out. However, if you are really looking to maximize that torpedo harassment, if you are really, really love living on the edge and you're very confident in your, in your, 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 uh, your destroyer skills, this TRB uh, consumable might be for you. And again, I'll say the same thing I said last time. If you're looking at playing this ship in ranked or a setting where you can actively avoid opposing aircraft carriers by looking at the matchmaker while you're sitting in the queue, I think TRB is a, is a good choice. Uh, if you're going to play around in randoms, I would highly encourage you to stick with Smoke Generator. Again, especially if you're still learning the ship. Flags are about the same, right? We're talking about Juliet, Charlie, Sierra Mike, November Foxtrot. We want to not explode, go faster, and have my consumables come back quicker. And then our holy trinity of fire chance buffs and flooding buffs here out of uh, Victor Lima, India X-Ray, and Juliet Whiskey, Uta 1. All the other flags I don't think are worth it. Uh, you definitely don't want to buff your A. What a giant waste of time. X-ray Papa Uni One is valid if you're gonna again if you're gonna be playing in a div and you want to be using the smoke to, to smoke up your teammates. Hey, go for it. Plug one of these in. The damage control flags are just not worth it. You're not gonna get a lot of value out of these. Save these for your battleships. Okay, captain skills. This this is gonna look very familiar. <laughs> okay, but I think there's some other things that are maybe worth considering. So let's talk through it. And I didn't hit this probably as hard at Kagero as I ought have, given how slow this ship is. So what I've done here for my captain, I've got my, my kind of holy, holy, uh, what is this? Not a trinity. Whatever four would be. Four, my top four destroyer skills, right? Right down the right-hand side of the tree. Preventive maintenance, last stand, survivability expert, and concealment expert. If you're still feeling your way through the, the, the line of ships, learning destroyer, that would be my starting recommendation. After that, you're going to want to look into buffing the torpedoes as best you can. Start with fill the tubes. 
There's a, you could actually make an argument to take fill the tubes over survivability expert first three points. If you're comfortable doing that, go right ahead. Either way, you're going to eventually want both, in my opinion. Um, and then uh, torpedo speed, swift fish. I, you could make an argument for adrenaline rush before swift fish. So these, I think these three three point skills are the ones that you want. But I, I do think you want to come back and can strongly consider swift fish. I think this is an excellent skill. Um, I have greased the gears for only one point. Never hurts. If you wanted to shift that over and maximize your flood chance, go right ahead. Japanese torpedoes flood uh, have a high enough flood chance. You'll get some value out of this, but the incremental change is, I think, less than about 10%. These torpedoes, the the Japanese, uh, these particular, the Type 93 Mod 3s have like a 406% flood chance. So by the time you add 30% to it, you're just not adding a whole lot. But at the same time, it's only one point. You might actually even be better off taking consumable specialists and getting just a little quicker reload on your smoke or engine boost. I think any one of those three is a good pick for another another one point skill. If you're looking for something, I would not bother with gun feeder, um, and I would not bother with incoming fire alert. Now, the skill that we should have talked about on Kagero, and I forgot, is this guy right here, Swift and Silence. Right. For starters, it nerfs your main battery reload. Your Japanese destroyer, you don't really care. Your reload is not what you do well. Your alpha strike is what you do well. But here's the thing. While you're using your best in tier stealth to move around the map, you're, you're base 8% faster. This is an excellent skill. Excellent skill. So good. So, um, this is only a 19-point captain, but I think if I had 21 points on this captain, I would strongly consider ditching these two points into Swift Fish and taking those last two points and picking up Swift and Silence. So I would really recommend as you move towards um, uh, a 21 point full out captain playing Yugamo that you really you really look into this. And I think I should probably go back and maybe leave a little community note or something on my Kagero video for the same reason. These two ships are slow enough. There is tremendous value in this four point skill for you. Um, and again, married to your crazy detection and again you only get that speed boost while you're undetected and you're going to be undetected the overwhelming majority of the time you play these boats this is an excellent four point skill you really don't want to take fear, uh, fearless brawler we've had a lot of conversation about radio location i think i think that again if you if you wanted to take this instead of swift in silence totally valid case for it totally valid case for it um at kigero i had this skill here at yugamo i'm not using it it's debatable, right? I played with this skill up and down the line. I'm a lot more convinced of its value now than I was when I started this video series. But I still think that it's, you know, Japanese skill dest Japanese destroyers are so skill hungry. These captains, there's so many skills in here that you really want or really need. You just can't take everything. So you have to decide what's more important to you. Is the is the speed more important or would you rather have the, in the, the intel? I think there's an argument to be made that the intel is the better pick. Because with the intel, you might not need the speed boost. But you do you, right? Whatever. I think either one of these is an excellent pick. Um, Dazzle for four points. I mean, straight up speed boost. This is interesting, actually. Um, this skill has recently changed. It's a skill for a long time. I would never have recommended on a destroyer. But now, you just get a straight up 8% speed boost. Anybody that shoots at you, fewer of fewer their shells connect. Hmm. That might have some value as well if you're looking to stay alive. I don't think you're going to get a ton of value out of this except for that speed boost. You will get value out of that 100%. Now, the trick here is you only get this speed boost when you're spotted. So Dazzle gives you the speed boost when you're lit. Swift and Silence gives you the speed boost when you're undetected. This is a better pickup. You're going to spend most of your time undetected. So I don't know. I don't think I would take Dazzle on the ship now that I talked myself I talked myself kind of out of it here, so I wouldn't do this. And you definitely don't want to do anything with your gun range. Do not, do not, do not take this skill over here. Uh, what is this one? Main battery A. Yeah, don't, don't take this. Uh, and don't take, don't take main battery and A specialist. Not on the ship. Not, not good. Not good. So yeah, I think, I think if you're looking for some other skills to shift around, I think consumable specialist, liquidator, swift and silence, radio location, even demolition expert, all worthy of consideration. Maybe even priority target. Most of the rest, I would probably avoid. Okay, now we didn't talk very much about modules. Let's talk about modules because there's two things on here that I want to highlight. One is the range mod, right? We talked about this at Kagero. If you don't want to spend the cash, I think you should not invest in this, right? Um, or if you do, you know, unlock it so you can get the fancy silver status on the ship, but then immediately unequip it. 
right? Because I think I don't think you want the gun bloom. I just don't think it's going to get you a whole whole lot in most cases. Now, the torpedo choices are a little more interesting. You start off with this guy right here. This is the module that you have when you unlock the ship. These are the same torpedoes you were used to firing at the top of Kagero. They're excellent torpedoes, and you're going to use them here. In order to get to the 12-kilometer ones, though, that we were talking about, you've got to work through, you've got to earn your way through or spend some free XP on the Japanese F-3s. Now, the F-3 torpedo is very, very fast. 84 knots. Now, that's with all the buffs and everything. Right, let's uh, let's strip these off just so I can show you the base speed because I don't know it off the top of my head, and I want to make sure that we're giving you guys uh, good info here. So the base speed of these torpedoes then would be 76 knots, and you can see there they hit just a little harder, a, an alpha of a touch over 21,000 points. The speed is what you're really getting here because you're not getting range, only eight kilometers. The reload on these base. Let's pull out one more module and we'll give you that. It should be around 110 seconds or so. 104. 104 seconds. So these reload a little faster than the ones, the, 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 mod, the mod 3s that we've been looking at the rest of the video. But they have less range, but they're very fast. Hmm. Hmm. Now remember, with enough buffs, you can get the Mark 3s up to 74 knots. And with the same buffs, you can get these torpedoes up to 84 knots. I know some people in this game who swear by the F3s. And they are, honestly, when you can make them work, they're hilarious. But again, I, I, I look at playing with the F3s the same way I look at playing with Torpedo Reload Booster. This is a I like living dangerously kind of choice. It's not the thing. I, it's not something I would recommend for players. First time in the ship, learning the line, trying to unlock Shimakaze. You know, if you've played this ship, you've got 50, 60 games in the ship. You want to try it. You want to mess around. You already unlocked Shima. Hey, have fun. Go to town. Give it a shot. But if you're still finding your way, if you're in your first dozen or 15 games in the ship and you're trying to get a feel for it and work your way through it, yeah, don't do this. Don't do this. Save this for later. Save exploring the F3 torpedoes on Yugamo for a, another day. Um, that's my recommendation. So, so just keep that in mind. You're going to have to unlock them to move past them to pick up the Mod 3s, which are where I think you should land by the time you're all done. But just, uh, just keep that in mind that, that the F3s are available and that sometimes they can be really really hilarious and i mean hilarious there's some videos on youtube that are just hilariously funny with the f3s people doing shenanigans it's it's a thing they're really really good at murdering opposing destroyers because they are so fast they're really entertaining all right let's go look at some real quick sample gameplay guys and we'll come back here and we'll do a little bit of outro all right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the north spawn of Sleeping Giant as we take a look at our sample game in Tier 9 Japanese destroyer, Yugamo. Yugamo, of course, is uh, top tier in this game, which has been a kind of a recurring theme now that I think about it the last few videos. But I'll be honest, even when she's not top tier, when you find her in a Tier 10 or even a Tier 11, <coughs> cough, cough, super ship game, Yugamo is still a very, very, very solid boat. So don't be dismayed when you find yourself up-tiered, as it will happen commonly with the ship, but she is incredibly capable. So, arms race. Ordinarily, this would be, you would think, a haven for a Japanese destroyer with very low detection, right? I have 5-5 five, five surface detection. I'm up against a, uh, a Kitakaze, which is going to be around 6 or so, a Black, which is going to get down just a touch under 6, but have 7.5 kilometer radar, and a Fried uh, uh, Felix Schultz, which is like like, like right at 6.5 or six, near 7, right, on the surface. So, like, I outspot, even if it's by a small margin, I outspot all the opposing destroyers and the opposing submarine. I ought to have free reign look, running into these uh, arms race uh, buffs. The struggle I'm going to have is that none of them ever spawn on this side of the map, right? You see these, I've got, immediately, I've got two in Thunderdome. My Salmon is going to make a turn and try and claim some of those. And these two battleships up in front of me, the Awami and the Friedrich, those guys and I are going to get to know each other intimately well over the course of this game. And spoiler alert, it's not actually going to be that long of a game. I have the opportunity right here to take a pot shot at the Schultz, but like we've talked about, one of the keys to knowing the, learning these ships is learning when not to fire. That was a moment not to fire. I do not want these battleships to know where I am. I don't want them to suspect that I'm here just yet. Now, one of the things that is kind of frustrating, right, is because of the way I'm spawned, I'm, again, I'm spawned on this flank, the guys are pushing into me, I'm firing into ships, I'm firing into the narrow profile of these ships as they push towards me, and it basically can't be helped. So the only way for me to possibly land hits in these instances 
is to sort of overwhelm their defenses with torpedoes and prevent them from having gaps that they can steam through. So that's why I'm firing all my torpedoes at once right there, trying to get an overlaid pattern that does not present them with many options that they can just simply sneak through. However, the Iwami and the Friedrich are doing me a big solid by staying very close together. That gives me the possibility of landing tar targets on, tor on uh, torpedoes on multiple targets from only firing, you know, one salvo, basically. And that's always handy when you're a, uh, uh, a, a destroyer driver. You're always looking for opportunities to maximize that kind, of, that kind of synergy. Now, one thing I could be doing here that I don't do is smoking up my friendly New Orleans. This is possibly a mistake in this game, right? I could have smoked up right here. Even if I just laid a smoke screen across uh, and let him retreat behind it while continuing to spot would have been a smart use of at least one smoke. But I don't do that, and that's probably a mistake. I do manage to land one torpedo on somebody. I have no idea who, and they know I'm here now, so the smoke would not have really been a surprise or probably even dissuaded them from continuing to push, but it might have kept the New Orleans in the game a little longer. The Friedrich I'm expecting now to have his Hydro up, but I'm still going to put these torpedoes down range because it's possible you can see the Iwami is out in front of him. If I pause it real briefly, right? The Friedrich is at 10.3, the Iwami is at 9.1, which means that if I focus, if I keep locked onto the Iwami and make that my target, even if the Friedrich's Hydro is up, the Iwami will have less time than the Friedrich to react to those torpedoes, and that might give me the opportunity to land some more hits. The four enemy ships on this flank continuing to push, whereas the New Orleans and I have sort of been left to die, right? He's retreating, the Nebraska is headed back east, and the Harlem, who spawned on this flank, has basically never been interested in playing here at all. That torpedo salvo, of course, is going to fall astern of the Friedrich. I'm going to get one more into the Iwami's bow, and he's going to flood for a little bit here, I think. Nope, just not very long. Maybe just two ticks of flood there, as it looks like he put it all out. So I'm just trolling at three quarters speed here. These guys are continuing to push into me. As a Japanese destroyer, I am 100% content to let this all continue to unfold, just as it is. I have essentially best in game detection against ships that are pushing right at me, meaning, I mean, I'm right where I wanna be. The Iwami at some point is gonna have to turn to his starboard and cut back towards the middle of the board because over here it has nothing else to shoot at. And the Friedrich is also gonna have to make that maneuver at some point. So now let's talk about this salvo right here. I'm about to split my salvo and fire one rack at each battleship. I, what did I just get through saying? The Friedrich is going to have to turn back to the east, right? And what did I do? I led that salvo wrong. So I'm going to lead the salvo on the Iwami, quote unquote, correctly. I'm actually going to overlead it a bit and the assumption he's going to turn harder than he actually does. And then the Friedrich salvo I lead, expecting him to continue up the one line. But of course, he doesn't. He does exactly what he should do. He turns his bow and comes back towards the east. So what I should have done in that instance, either fire both racks at the Iwami or fire one rack at the Iwami and hold the second rack until the Friedrich is done maneuvering. And then I can either follow up on the Iwami with another rack or come back on the come back at the Friedrich. As it is, I do get one into the Iwami's bow. And again, that flood is going to stick for a few ticks here. But now that I've got all of this room to play, look at the map real fast. Look at the map, right? We only have a one ship lead. We have a buff lead. But there are, like, I'm still in a very target-rich environment. I've still got two big old relatively healthy battleships in front of me, and I have, like, 10 kilometers between myself and the top of the map to play with. I have all the room in the world. These guys are going to have to turn towards mid. Eventually, all these down-the-throat torpedo salvos I've been firing are going to turn into something much deadlier for these guys, and we're almost there. Now, because of the, the arms race buffs, my torpedo reload is down to about, ordinarily, it's 84 seconds. I think it's down to right a little over 60. It's like 62 or 66 right now, which feels really good with these torpedoes because they hit like trains. All right, again, the Iwami continuing to turn his bow to the east, so again, just as before, each battleship now going to get one rack. But this salvo is going to produce much better results. Not only did I overlead each salvo just a hair with the expectation that they would continue their starboard turn, um, I am now, I'm, you know, I'm only about eight kilometers out firing those. That gives them not a lot of reaction time because of the speed of these torpedoes. The Iwami in particular is in, in uh, tremendous amounts of trouble, right? Because I'm going to put two into him here. He's going to take two floods 
Bow and a Stern Flood. He's going to take 30k from the Torps themselves. I'm going to just barely miss catching the Friedrich with two. The Friedrich's DCP is available. Oh, no, he's actually, he actually floods right now. But the Awami is on two floods. He's losing 800 health a second. And my torpedoes are very nearly reloaded again. Friedrich continuing to push. I mean, I'm exactly where I want to be as the Iwami floods out. 135,000 damage on six torpedo hits. Mm. All right. I'm staggering. Okay, so now let's, let's talk again. We've talked before with Japanese destroyers about trying to intentionally stick floods. That's what I'm doing right here. I fired one rack, and I'm looking down. You can see my torpedo reload now just a hair under 70 seconds. So my, I'm going to wait 30 or 35 seconds before I fire the second rack. I'm trying... this. Uh, first of all, I'm up against a Hydro Battleship, right? A Friedrich, if his Hydro's available, he's probably not going to take any of these at all. And I want to be able to keep staggering my launches to confuse him, screw him up, basically. If I fire one salvo, he gets 60, 60, 70, you know, 70 seconds of nothing. But if I fire a rack, wait 35, 30, 35 seconds, fire another rack, wait 30, 30, you know, 30 ish seconds, my first rack is up again. I can just keep churning them out. He's going to take one in the stern with a flood. Flood's going to stick for a bit. But then he's going to get absolutely hammered, just hammered by the Nebraska's main battery. And that last little flood tick finishes him off. On only seven torpedo hits, two big battleship kills and a whole pile of damage. Now, some of that is arms race, right? I'm getting reload buffs. I'm getting damage buffs. Yes. But some of that is also taking advantage of the board position offered by having all these big battleships pushing into me. That rack is for the Schultz, right? He's smoked. He's sitting. He's trying to camp and smoke down there. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to have any of that. So the rack was available, so I fired it. But with the Harlem right there, I'm 100% not afraid to potentially engage this Schultz in a gunfight. He's already below half HP. I've got a buddy right there. My Harlem literally just rammed the submarine to death like a boss. So now it's like, okay, time to speed boost. Let's get back down here and try to get, become uh, relevant in this engagement. Harlem now has the Schultz lit on Hydro. Schultz has nowhere to run. Cannot escape this. Might yet kill this Harlem, though, who's down to 3 or 4K and is trying to power through it with a heal. It's time my guns got in on this action. I am going to hit about two or three shells on this guy. Solid damage, but in the end, the second salvo is going to arrive just a hair too late. The Nebraska is going to clean him up. That's going to zero out the enemy team, and that is a win. Not a very long game, but I think it, it definitely highlights, you know, what are Yugamo's strengths? Torpedoes, torpedoes, torpedoes. Look at the havoc that I caused with only seven torpedoes. Just crazy. Now, from an XP perspective, this is not an amazing game. The game didn't last long enough for anybody to really run away with great, great numbers. But one of those rare games where you look across the board and go, hmm, everybody kind of helped, right? Salmon picked up some early buffs. The New Orleans, unfortunately, this is, the, this is the one regret that I have about this game. I should have smoked this guy. I should have made an effort to play more like a teammate and help this guy out, and I didn't. So I'll own that. That's on me. Um, big flood damage in this game, right? 45,000 flood damage. Partly because of the reload boost that I was getting from the arms race, but also partly because I was starting to try and stagger my torpedo salvos and intentionally go looking for floods. You can absolutely do that with these Japanese torpedoes. You should be doing it whenever you get the opportunity. This poor Wami guy, this guy's got to hate my guts. 100,000 damage out of me just, just on those torpedoes and floods. Of course, I did my fair share to the, damp to the Frederick and then that last little chip damage. The only time I even fired my guns against the Schultz. Nice little game in Yugamo there, just to kind of give you a, uh, a flavor of, of how she plays. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there she is, Tier 9 Japanese Destroyer Yugamo. You're almost there. Next video will basically be the top of the line as we get up to Shimakaze. But Yugamo is, Yugamo is basically Kagero Part 2. You get some buffs, you get a couple of mild nerfs, and you get a couple more things to manage in terms of um, your AA, being able to you know, make sure you keep that off. And, uh, and that sort of thing. But um, if you liked Kagero, you're going to like Yugamo. If you didn't like Kagero, this ship is going to feel like a struggle because she's more of the same. The interesting thing is that a whole, whole lot of things change when you get to Shimakaze at Tier 10. But that is for next time. Guys, y'all take care. Wash your hands. Be safe. And I'll see you then.